Do you have a Smith & Wesson 1522? In this video, I'm gonna go through some routine maintenance. So we're gonna strip it, we're gonna clean it, and we're also gonna do a bit of lens cleaning as well. Watch this video to find out more. Before we do anything with our firearm, we need to prove that it's clear. So I'm gonna remove the safety flag. I'm gonna check inside the barrel, the body, and the magazine well, make sure all of them are clear. Working parts forward, fire off the action. Working parts to the rear and hold them open and then reapply the safety. Once we've done that, we can flag it again. We know that that rifle is clear. Let's take a look at the gear that I use to clean my Smith & Wesson 1522. So I like to use Bortec Rimfire Blend. This stuff is fantastic. This gets rid of lead and carbon deposits within my 22 rifle. I then oil it up using Friction Guard XP gun oil. The other tools that I use, I've got a bore stick, this is a V stick, and this is the 25. A nylon rifle brush. A proof positive patch jag. A breech tool. Some one inch patches. A Vortex lens cleaning kit. wire brush, a paintbrush, and a rag. Now that we know the rifle is clear, we're gonna strip it for daily cleaning. So we're gonna remove the breech flag, press the bolt release, and the working parts will then go forwards. Don't fire off the action because we want to keep that hammer back. So let's split the upper and the lower receivers. So push the top pin and then pull the rest of the pin out and then grip the rifle like so and use your thumb on the charging handle and then you should easily be able to split the rifle. Next thing we need to do is take out the working parts so we pull on the charging handle and that will remove the charging handle and the working parts so we just place them down. Next, we need to split the upper and the lower receiver. So we push the pin through and then pull it through the other side. And then the upper and the lower receiver can split. I always push the pins back in, just good habit to get into. And then that is the rifle stripped for daily cleaning. First off, we're gonna focus on the lower receiver assembly. Areas to focus on within the lower receiver assembly are inside the trigger mechanism and inside the magwell. There isn't much else that you need to clean on this. I like to clean inside just with a normal paintbrush. Just get the brush in there with the bristles just to take out any loose debris. Give the outside a bit of a brush and inside the magazine well. Just check that you've got all the small fragments from inside the trigger mechanism. Another thing you can get from office supply shops is an air duster. Uh, these are brilliant for getting any bits of debris that might be within the receiver. You can add a little extension on there, give it a quick blast, just squirt inside and that should blow out any debris. Done. 
So all we're going to need to do really with this is just add a little bit of oil on the springs just to make sure that they don't get any rust on them. So I'm going to use a bit of friction guard. You don't want to add lots of oil in here, you just want little dabs. So that's a little, little drip on the springs, it just keeps it all nice inside. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to switch it onto fire, take the pressure with your finger, squeeze the trigger, so we don't want to damage the trigger assembly in any way, and that way you can get inside a little bit easier. So like I say, a couple of drops, and then we're just going to work it backwards and forwards a few times. I'm just going to use an old t-shirt that I've cut up, We can dab off any excess oil. There we go. The other thing I'm going to use the cloth for is just wiping inside the mag well. Let's give that a quick inspection. Any really places I've seen carbon build up, it's just around the front here. A little wipe over and that gets it all out. So pop that back on the safe and then that's the receiver all nice and clean and oiled. So next we're going to take a look at the working parts. This is a single assembly and I don't strip it any further. There's lots of little tiny moving parts inside here for the extractors. Um, I haven't taken them apart. I don't see any need to unless it's broken. So just get my cloth, just give it a good wiping over. Get it right in there. And just because I've seen these ping off. Uh, just put your finger there just to kind of stop it, just in case. And just wipe the bolt face. The other thing I use is a small uh, bronze brush, just for getting any carbon out of the face of the bolt. There can be a build up inside. Um, I like to make sure that this is all nice and clean inside of there. That way, the two two cartridges fit inside there nicely and you've got less chance of a malfunction. Once we clean the bolt face, we just need to clean all the back. So just get your finger in there. I like to use this breech tool as well. Um, it's really handy. It's, uh, it's got a nice thin finger, an angled finger on it. So put a couple of folds in my cloth and then that can get right into these little gaps. I think this tool is designed for ARs. It was designed really primarily for like 223 or 300s or whatever, but an AR platform. It's got a really cool little brush in there that you can just get in. You can get all that dirt out from around the firing pin. The other thing I like to do is you push the working parts back and you can hold them back and then just wipe around underneath where the spring goes. And then we can move the spring back down the other way, clean under there. Just to get any dirt out from underneath. And just inside the extractor, just anywhere there might be little bits of dirt, I like to get the brush just to make sure it's all cleaned out and just inside where the firing pin lives as well. As you can use 
the back of the breech tool just to push on the little button and then you can check that your firing pin is okay as well so that's you can still see the firing pin there that's all good all right once you've got your bolt assembly nice and clean just apply a few dabs of oil on i like to dab underneath the spring and then just rack the bolt back by my hand so i know that's all done apply a little bit on my fingers and then just for the outside of the spring just to keep it in tip-top condition and then you've still got oily fingers so just the out lightly oil the outside of the bolt and i usually wipe a bit of oil over the bolt face and then i dry it because i always keep the bolt face clear of oil because otherwise carbon sticks to it really easily the other parts you need to oil up are these two runners so if i move that you'll see that the, that the whole bolt slides on the runners so i'll just put that down put a little dab of oil along there dab of oil along here and then we just move the working parts just to make sure we get that oil inside And again, just use the cloth and just take off any excess. So we don't want all the oil to spring everywhere when we're firing. There you go. So that's all nicely oiled up. Uh, it's good to go, so I'll be able to put that back straight back into the rifle. This is just the standard charging handle that comes with the Smith & Wesson. So again, just use my little brush on the breech tool, just get any uh, any debris out from inside and then give it a wipe over and you've got moving parts here so everywhere there's moving parts I always put a, a little dab of oil and just work it in and then as before just wipe off any excess we only want the oil on the inside on the moving parts charging handle now clean last but no means least um, we've got the upper assembly which includes the barrel we've got inside here in the chamber area uh, and also very important your optics um, and we've got an optics cleaning kit here so again I'll show you how to clean the optics in a minute uh, but we're going to clean the barrel first and then we're going to clean the optics firstly <clears throat> inside the receiver area you'll notice that's where a lot of the fouling starts so again I usually apply a bit of oil in there just to kind of help I say a little quite a lot I suppose uh, but as you can see there's a lot of carbon that will come off when you sort of add a bit of oil on there see it so I just use my finger just to kind of get it all started it's all nice and mucky which means it's coming off and then I use my rag Okay, so inside the chamber you can see there's quite a bit of dirt that gets just behind the barrel so again if you've got a breech tool you can use the little brush on the breech tool just for getting right in there and freeing up all that dirt I don't tend to use the spiky end very much, but I do use the angled end and uh, and this end here for the brush. Like I say you can swap the brush around depending on what angle you want to use it on. Uh, but like I say I like this end, the little angled finger. It's fantastic for getting in all those places that your finger can't quite get to. So there you go, you can get right in there. And there's grooves that run both sides inside the receiver and then run that inside the groove and that fits nicely and both sides 
and then where the charging handle sits as well there's a big groove there um, you can get this get this tool a bit of t-shirt and then get right in there and that cleans up quite nicely then this has probably only had I don't know 400 rounds through it so it's not absolutely dirty um, I usually clean it after every time I go to the range uh, just because I want my rifle to stay at kind of peak performance I know there's a lot of people out there that will run it um, and they will put you know, thousands of rounds through and these things will take that but there will come a point when uh, all of the build up and all of the dirt will cause you stoppages and I don't want that so I like to keep it nice and clean okay so that's inside the receiver cleaned next thing we're going to give the barrel a bit of a clean so just put the oil away for a second and what we're going to use we're going to use some rim fire blend uh, patches i've got a proof positive jag and then i've got a nylon brush so the way these work let's take them out i, I like to store them in the packets as well because i've got a number of these for different calibers um, it just helps um, because they all look very similar so I usually store them inside the packets so I've got the patch jug here and I've got my ball stick or V stick I think this is and this is the number 25 so the patch jug just screws on the end I'll just put that down for a second the way this stuff works is you get some patches and you need to eat one of those puddings to give yourself a glass dish um, goo that's a goo pudding and I'm sure they're very tasty um, but yeah I, I just use these so I drop some patches in here so I'm gonna put four patches I can get them apart four patches and then I'm going to put some rim fire blend on them. Again, get them nice and wet. So we want basically what we want to do is we want to kind of coat the barrel on the inside with this rim fire blend. So I use four patches just to get it nice and wet inside the barrel. What we do is we take the patch, just unfold it. And then we put it on the end of the jag, like so. You get the barrel, and we just push it in. And we just push it into the barrel, and then just push it all the way through. So that's the first one. Uh, only use these patches once as well, and only push it through one way, and push it out towards the muzzle. So we want all of the dirt to go out that way and not back into the chamber. There we go, so this is second patch. So again, guide him in there, push it through. After each time, just make sure that your jag is nice and tight on the rod. Patch number three. Folded them up nice and tight. There you go. Just pop that one on. So get the rod, push it through. And then patch number four. Okay, so just use a rag, just wipe it all off, keep it all nice and clean as we go. Take the patch jag off, put that to one side, and then we're going to get the nylon rifle brush, and then screw that on. Be careful when you're screwing them on because you don't want to cross thread it. Balance the rod and then just put a bit of rim fire blend 
onto the brush and just turn it as we go whole idea is that this is sort of soaking if you like with rimfire blend doesn't matter if it drips in there because we're gonna put some more patches in there in a bit so holding the handle insert there you go insert the nylon brush and then we want 10 to 15 good passes you can make your life easier and have a ball guide um, I like to do things difficult <laughs> and I've lost count because I've been talking to you do a few more As before just get a cloth and just wipe it over including the brush at the end just make sure we got all the dirt and things off of that I will unscrew that and I'm going to stow that back away because we get, don't need that again till next time get our patch jag pop that back on nice and tight going to need a little bit more on our patches just going to use three patches here there we go. patch jag on and we're going to push that through and then hopefully you'll see that it's it's got some of the dirt off Go. Last one. Once we've done the Bortec soaked patches, I'm going to run through some clean patches. So the barrel is already coming out quite clean, which is great. So I'm just going to give that a wipe over. Leave the patch jag on, but like I say, just make sure it's tight on there because we don't want that coming off. Just lost my lens cover. Don't want to get any bits on the lenses. Okay, so now, if you notice where I've been running the patches through, there's some of the fluid inside the receiver. So I'm just going to use the cloth and just dry it out because what I don't want to do is I don't want to push any of the dirt and things back through the barrel. So there we go, just keep it all nice and clean inside. Okay, so that's all nice and clean inside there. So these are the dirty patches, so we just move them away. And get some clean patches out. I don't think we need loads of these, which is great. Just put some patches down there just so they're easier to get. Right. So same as before, these are just clean ones though. So pop it on there, so in the middle of the patch and then push it through from the chamber end. Yeah, it's not gonna need many of these, I don't think is great. Push that through. So still got a bit on there. A couple more. That should do it. Last one, I think. All right, so that's all pushed through. There you go, nice and clean. So put them to one side. Just gonna tighten that jag on there. 
last thing I'm going to do, so you can leave the rimfire blend in the barrel if you want to. You can put a, a soaked rimfire blend patch in there. Uh, what I like to do is I like to put a patch that's just got the friction guard XP on and that'll give it a little bit more protection. So I'm just going to soak this patch. Okay, so that's got a nice bit of oil on there. So you want to protect the inside of the barrel, make sure that it doesn't corrode. Slippery little thing, pop that on. And then push it through. So before we fire it, we know that we've left some oil in the barrel. So we want to leave it sort of lightly oiled inside there. Before we fire, we're going to pull it through uh, just to make sure that it's clear. So what we don't want to do is put rounds through it with a really oily barrel. The other thing we need to clean on here is the flash eliminator. As you can see, there's small carbon deposits on there. So what I'm going to do is just get the rag. Leave that off for a minute. And then I'm going to use this small angled part of the breech tool. Just wrap a bit of double wrapped t-shirt because otherwise it will go through it. And then you can just clean inside the flash eliminator. Depending on the uh, flash eliminator or muzzle brake uh, will depend on what tool you use, obviously. So that's cleaning that up. Just gets in there. My finger wouldn't be able to fit in that. Okay, that's all done nicely. And then the other thing, don't forget just to clean inside the crown of the barrel. So surprise, surprise, we're going to use the end of the breech tool again and on a bit of cloth. Oop, see what I mean? It's gone through it there. Don't want that to happen. So we just move the cloth again. And then just clean inside. You can feel where the rim is. So just turn it around. Put one other patch through it because when you clean the crown uh, you sometimes get debris going into the barrel. Also should take off any excess oil. There we go. Right, so that's our barrel done. You can see where I've been pushing oil and things through. It's, there's a bit more dirt and grit in there. Just going to try this actually. Step back. You can see it all running down on the inside. Just clears it all out. And all I'm doing is just blowing down the edges, not actually into the barrel. And then you can just use your t-shirt again just to dry it all out. You get quite a few cleaning cloths out of a t-shirt. Okay, all right. Okay, so that's the firearm all nicely cleaned. Okay. So just wipe the rod off. So we want to put all that back so it's all nice and clean. Put the jag back in the packet. So we put the rifle back together in opposite order. So just gonna push the pins out. stiff that one and then put the front pin in push it in so it locks and then we get the bolt assembly and the charging handle put them together and then we can just slide them in and then close the upper and the lower and then push the pin back through and that's him back together So now we've got the rifle put back together, we're gonna go through some function checks. 
So firstly, we want to make sure that the bolt holds open to the rear. So we press the bottom of the bolt release catch, pull the charging handle, and then that should hold the bolt to the rear. So push the charging handle forwards, operate the bolt release, and the bolt should go forwards. Turn the fire selector to safe, and then pull the trigger. The trigger should not operate. Turn the fire selector to fire, squeeze the trigger, the hammer should go forwards. Keep holding the trigger to the rear. And we're gonna operate the bolt and then slowly release the trigger and you should hear the trigger mechanism resetting. That was the click there and then operate the trigger and it should fire off the action. So now we know that the rifle will operate in semi-automatic mode. Once we've confirmed that the firearm is gonna work, we lock the bolt to the rear, reinsert the flag, and pop the safety back on. So the rifle's now cleaned and we know that it operates correctly. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to clean the optics. So I'm gonna take off my dirty gloves because we don't want to contaminate any of your lenses with oil. And then we're going to open up the optics kit and get all the component parts out. And I'll run through what these are for. So within the kit, we've got a, an anti-fog lens cleaner. We've got cleaning tissue, a brush and a cloth. So I'll just demonstrate cleaning the lens. So this is the Vortex Venom. What we're going to do is we're going to use the brush so you take the lid off first twist the brush out and then use the brush just to take off any bits of dust that might be on the lens and then you can twist the brush away that keeps it safe next we take a bit of the anti-fog lens cleaner and this comes out at quite a pace so give it a squirt and you'll see what i mean there you go, nice big blob comes out of there. Pop the lid back on. And then I'm just gonna rest that on my shoulder and take out some lens tissue. So tear off a piece of lens tissue. And then I'm just gonna fold it up just so that it's easier to handle. And then you get your lens tissue and you just really lightly just do circles around the lens, and get into all the corners I say these uh, these lenses have got an anti-fog or an anti-glare coating, so you don't want to press too hard. You want to make sure all of the grit is off with a brush before you do this. So there you go, nice and gently. Just small circles around the lens with the lens tissue. Once that's done, you get your little vortex towel. Just dry those bits off. And then just a little corner. And again, I usually do circles just to get into all those little corners. Nice and light. Don't want to press too hard. There we go. And that is how we clean the lenses. So we do the outside of the lens. We do the inside of the lens. And then we do exactly the same on the Spitfire as well, both lenses. And just make sure that you wipe off any of the excess anti-fog spray so you don't get any rust in there. And then once you've done all of the lenses, then that is your rifle, good to go. You can pop that back in the cabinet and then you know when you go to the range, it's gonna be in peak performance. I hope you enjoyed that video please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel that way you won't miss out any more content thank you very much for watching